Jazz Ranch. It's summertime and it's sunset time and the horses are out there. They're singing ballads to each other. And I have a quote for you from the great pianist Bill Evans. He said this probably in an interview. He's being interviewed and he said this. My creed for art in general is that it should enrich the soul. It should teach spirituality by showing a person a portion of himself that he would not discover otherwise. A part of yourself you never knew existed. That's what music will do for you. And he also said this, it bugs me when people try to analyze jazz as an intellectual theorem. It's not. It's feeling. Yeah, so you can reduce it right down to that. In, uh, now I'm going to be showing you some things now that are drills, not too intellectual, but they are drills. And they have to do with the left hand. Left hand chords in block position and inversions and how to use them with a melody and how to drill them so you get better at them. So here we go now with left hand drills for the seventh chords. Let's pretend that you're sitting next to me here at the piano and I want to show you starting out drills that you can use in your left hand to form block chords, the most important ones, and play melodies in, in your right hand. like. that type of thing. Uh, this is the way you play when you play in a band, often or jazz band. You're going to be chording in the left hand, which accompanies the right hand. In other words, the comping is in the left. So now you need drills. So you need to learn the, first of all, the, we'll take five types of seventh chords. Those are chords that are, have the root, third, fifth, and seventh. And then we'll take two types of sixth chords. So that's, uh, Five and two is, is seven. So there's seven basic chords you want to learn in every key. But we're just going to start out easy now with the key of C and the key of F. And then we'll move into the key of G and the key of B flat. So we're going to start out with no sharps flats, one flat, then one sharp, and then two flats. But we're going to concentrate on the, the, the first two. And then we're going to apply them to a to song so you can see how, how it works. I want to cover as much ground in as short a possible time as I can, so if you want to slow down the video, use the gear, the round gear below the video to, to create half speed. You have to just have the video running while you hit it. Or you can rewind using the arrows. And I have a video that shows you how to do that. If, if, if you're interested, just write to me. But anyway, we want to start out with the basic major and minor and diminished triads. And we'll just go with C, F, and maybe G and B flat. So we're going to be doing no, no sharps or flats. The key of one flat, which is F, the key of one sharp, which is G, and then the key of two flats, which is B flat. So those are the four easiest keys we'll start with. And just the first two to begin. Now major, right, minor, diminished. So those triads with the added seventh form the five types of seventh chords that we want. To, to learn. So we add the major seventh to the major triad, we get the major seventh chord. We add the major triad and we flat the seven or a minor seven. Now we get a dominant seventh chord or a C seven. This is C major seven, this is C dominant seven. Now we take the minor triad or lower the third half step for a minor chord, add the minor seventh interval we have the minor seventh chord. Now we flat the five or diminish it. Now we have the half diminished chord or the minor seven flat five. And if we lower the seventh one more time to a sixth, now we have the diminished seventh or some people call it the diminished sixth chord. And those are the five types of, of seventh chords. Again, the major seventh, the dominant seventh, the minor seventh, the minor seventh flat five and the diminished seventh or diminished sixth, full diminished chord. Now you want to drill that like that so you see the difference and you want to of course do it in the other key. So we'll start with F, F major seven, F dominant seven, F minor seven, F half diminished and F full diminished. So you want to do that in G. So 
You can slow down the video to watch this, but you, the, the, you need to drill those in the easiest keys to start. B flat would be this. So you get those maneuvers. You really want to see what the maneuvers are, but there's, this is just a drill, but then you need to process this in a variety of ways. You need to move them chromatically like that. You need, you know, and, and variety of ways we'll show you later. But just drill them in the keys, and those four keys to start, or even just two, whatever level you're at, just start with the first two keys, C and F. Do the major seventh, the dominant seventh, the minor seven, the minor seven flat five, and then the full diminished seventh. Then I'll show you two six chords coming up. Okay, so the two six chords now are just root third, fifth, and then major six. So there's the major six, and then you lower the third, the minor six. Now you may say, why do we need those? Well, often when the melody is on a C, you don't want a major seventh in there because of that. Or maybe you like that, I don't know, but usually we'll change that to a six, and often we'll use a six nine chord as well. So you can six major nine, six minor nine. So those are the two six chords. So if you add them all together, you have seven chords. You have five sevenths, right? C major seven, C dominant seven, C minor seven, C minor seven flat five, C full diminished or C diminished six, and then your C major six and your C minor six. Now you want to do the same thing for F. I would say drill those seven chords, obviously in as many keys as possible, but drill them in at least the first two keys, two easiest, C and F, and then G, and then B flat. We're just going to do that much. That's the start. Okay, so now imagine that I said to you, you have to learn that drill, in other words, the five sevenths and the two sixths in every key. See, that would be too much to learn, and it would be overwhelming, and you'd give up, and you'd quit, and you'd say, I can't do this, and you won't, won't practice the piano. But we're just going to learn them in C and F to start, and then if you get good at that, then go to G and B flat. And that is as much as we're going to do in this video, is those four keys. But the next thing you have to learn is the how to apply these to a, so I say harmonic system. In other words, a system that is going to work to uh, enable us to create songs, because we can't create songs just using these chords. Uh, they're, they're going to fit into, into various systems within various keys. But we have to figure out what's the system within within one key, like C for instance. And that system is always based on its scale and creating seventh chords playing the scale. In other words, we play the scale and these become the roots, and then we play the third, the fifth, the seventh, and we move each one up one note at a time within that scale only, playing no notes that are not in that scale. So the, for C scale, they're all white notes, of course. There's no black notes at all, so it goes like this. We play the scale like that. We can do it with thirds. We can do it with triads. We can do it with sevenths. We're going to do sevenths because those are jazz chords. So we're going to do, what do they form? Now, like, that's a C major seven. We're analyzing it from the root of the C. And when we go to the next one, we analyze it from the scale of D now, which is this, which has two sharps. You don't, have, you don't have to understand that. Just accept the fact that when we get to there now, it's a minor seven. Because in order to be major, it would have to be there, or would have to, would have to have those two sharps based on the, the root of D. But since that's lowered and this is lowered, now it becomes D minor seven. Next one is E minor seven. Next one is F major seven. Next one is G dominant seven, which is the only dominant seven. Next one is A minor 7, and this tricky one now, the last one is a half diminished. So this is a little complicated at first, but that's, that's what it is, and it's, that's the rule for any key you're in. So it goes like this. Major 7, minor 7, minor 7, major 7, dominant 7, minor 7, half diminished, major. Now I'm going to go into that a little bit further. The major seven has the major seven with the triad, right? The major triad. 
The minor seven has a minor triad with a minor seventh. Same thing for the E minor seven. When we get to there now, we have a major triad with a major seven. Now we get to the G seven. This is the interesting one. This is the dominant, which wants to take us back to one. This is the five chord. Five one is the biggest, most important progression in music. That wants to resolve back to C, like mostly like this. Or like, you don't really want to jump down there, but you can see that that wants to pull up to the C there and that wants to pull down. So there is tension in there because of the tritone. Now that's an interval of a flatted fifth. Just accept that for now. But the dominant seventh has a major triad with a minor seventh interval here. So major triad, minor seventh. It's the only dominant seventh in the system. Next one's another minor seven. And the last one, the tricky one has so it has a minor seventh here, it has a diminished fifth here, and it's a diminished chord on the bottom, a minor third there. So that's a diminished triad with a minor seventh interval there. So now you have a half diminished. If it were a full diminished, it would be that. So now I really got you, right? So major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished or minor seven flat five, major seven. So you have two major sevens, three minor sevens, one dominant seven, and one half diminished. Now if you, those chords, you can play most tunes just using those chords. You, you're missing the diminished and you're missing the sixth, but if you know those chords, now that's the system for C and you have to do the same thing for F. We won't go to any other keys, just do it in F now like this. You have to be sure that you are not playing any notes that aren't in the scale. So it has, F scale has one flat in it, so now you're going to have the flat show up every time. So when you go to the second note, I mean the second chord, F major 7 now, G minor 7, remember it has to be minor 7 on 2, so that the flat has to come in there. 3 is minor 7, flat has to come in there, that creates a, ma a major 7 for 4. Dominant 7, the flat in there makes it dominant and then minor seven again now here's that odd one there's that diminished triad minor a minor third there and a minor third there with the flat in there the b flat and then the minor seven there you see you can slow this down but there it is now i know this seems complicated but you just need to learn it in those two keys that's all so here it is in c again let's try it down here that's pretty easy in C, right? And then in F, it's this. That's a start. Those are the two basic drills for jazz chords in, in block position in your left hand. But I'm going to show you how now to apply them to a tune rather than going further with it and doing inversions of these chords which will complicate it. I'm just going to use those root position chords but we're going to do it in the key of F. So we're going to use the F system, right? That's the system. Now, I'm, now within that system I create a chord progression. So I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now the chord progression is going to be this. I'm going to use the two chord going to the five chord going to the one chord, going to the four chord, then I'm going to go to the seven chord, and then I'm going to go to the three chord, but I'm going to alter it and make it major and dominant. And that's the first eight measures of the song. Now I'm going to play a song and I'm going to show you what it sounds like in root position. I'm going to put the melody up here so it doesn't get in the way of the left hand so you can see the left hand voicings. So here's the melody of, of Autumn Leaves. G minor 7, right? Now up to the C7. F major 7, now the 1 chord up to the 4 chord. Now the, the 7 chord, I can play it down here. And then up to the 2 chord, but altered to dominant. Notice that that C sharp matches the left hand. Now now I end up on a D minor 7, which is the 6th chord, right? 
one, two, three, four, five, six. See, so you see the system of knowing the scale tone sevenths is working perfectly in a, in, a, in a song, which is an amazing thing because if it didn't work perfectly, then we wouldn't be able to write music in the traditional way. I want to point out that Autumn Leaves is actually in a minor key. It's in the relative minor of F. So even though the uh, key signature is F major, we end up in D minor, in the last chord of the song, like this. So we end up in D minor. So actually all that's going on here is 2, 5, 1 into F and then 2, 5, 1 into D minor, ending up on D minor. So the key is D minor. And then I'm only playing the first half of the tune. The second half is just a repeat of that, but opposite. In other words, it starts on the relative minor, 2, 5, 1 into relative minor, then 2, 5, 1 into relative major. And then it continues from there. So this is actually in the key of D minor. So now you see how the scale tone sevenths work within a tune. Now we need to learn how to invert them. That's the next step. And, and so basically we're going to start with the root position and we're going to see that each seventh chord has a root position and then three inversions. You know, each triad has two inversions. So F has these two, the, the root and then the first inversion and the second version, but it's major seven has root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. And every seventh chord has, of course, it has four notes in it, so it has three inversions. So going from G minor seven to C seven, now we don't have to jump like that. We can just invert this one. Now you invert like this, you just, inversion involves taking the bottom note, putting it on top and then moving the position up like this. Then taking the bottom note, moving it up to the top, and then taking the bottom note. So there's your three inversions for the C7. Root, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion. We'll take it down here. Now you can go either way. You can go up or down. You can go like, just reverse it. Root position, third inversion, second inversion, first inversion. So we'll go to the inversion that is closest to this chord. So we'll go down here. That's not it. That's it. So we'll go, we'll use that one. So now you have this. So now you have a nice, what we call voice leading maneuver here. But this voice moves down to there and this voice moves down to there. Now, and then, so, this is fascinating, but root position now, index down a whole, thumb down a half, and then it reverses to resolve it. The third, this one goes down a half, and this one goes down a whole. I got that right, actually. That's a half, and this is a whole. So now the same, same thing happens. This one is a half, and that one's a whole. So there it is. Now this formula will work for any key you're in. I mean, any minor seven, two, five, one in root position will work that way. Let's try it in, uh, well, D in C, right? Down a half, down a hole. Now this one down a half, this one down a hole. So there it is. So you can learn it that way. You can learn it visually. I like to learn it visually in C. That's a G minor 7, this is a C7 inverted, this is an F major 7. I, I know what the notes are, you learn what the notes are. You, that's the advantage of a piano, is that you can see the notes in the chord. You can see the pattern of it, and it makes sense. You can see this as being a C7 inverted, you see it. And then you see that major 7 just in position there. And that's extremely important that you see the visual and you also hear it and you also feel it. You feel it in your hands and you hear it visually. So that's, that's the most important 2-5-1 you're going to learn. And the first one you're going to learn is that one there. You're not going to go up here and do this. You're going to do this. It's going to sound like this. And it's going to continue. Another inversion. 
you see, that's how it works. That's voice leading. There you have it. Okay, here's a good challenge for you to, to finish up. Try playing the song now using the root position chords only. Now you can take it as slow as you want, like, like this. And using the inversions now. So like, let's go again. Root position for the G minor 7, C7 in inverted. F major 7 in root position, B flat major 7, inverted. B minor 7 flat 5 in root position, A7, D minor 7, and then G7 inverted. Do it that way first, then maybe go to first inversion like G minor 9, first inversion, C13. I'm going to put some, add some things in there. E half diminished inverted to A7 inverted. See now we'll, I'll mix it up a little bit. Mm. I'm using uh, approach chords. That's the idea of it. Okay, so the most important tip that I can give you about the left hand voicings and particularly using inversions or rootless chords is that whatever key you're playing in and whatever the position of the melody is, wherever the melody is located or whatever you're doing, and you want to play left hand voicings that are good voice leading and that are contemporary modern sounding voicings with ninths and thirteenths then you have to change the inversion. You have to begin to be flexible with which inversion you're using and go with that. So like, for instance, let's take um, B, the key of B flat now and we'll go to the two chord, which is C minor seven, and we'll put it up here. There's the C minor seven. Now we'll take it down an inversion like this. So if we took it up like this, and then we get to there, now we drop the root, add the ninth. So now we have a C minor nine like that with this minor second interval in there, but it's a nice sounding, it's a Bill Evans sounding chord. See, so if we had this, we could play that chord there, like and then, then it would, would move to the F, F13 like this, just moving that one note down. So this economy of motion concept, the voice leading is is the way to go. Is that this is the modern sound, you know, like this. You know, just keeping that close interval. These are I call these close closed voicings, or yeah. And that's the minor second is in there. So there's another way to play it. begin to 
vary it, but that's the basic thing that you want to learn is you want to learn the chords in their root position, then voice leading in the root position, then in the first inversion, then voice leading in the first inversion, second inversion, not as important, third inversion, important, and then voice leading in the third inversion. Then you really have your left hand moving in ways that you can... This is not beginner, of course, but the first part of this video is about the starting point. Now I took, took you from beginner to more intermediate and more into advanced, so you have the whole spectrum here. One more thing I want to show you about the left hand. You should all, always try to uh, practice chords in like this cycle of fifths and also chromatically ascending this is really good uh, keyboard technique if you can do this you know like so like you know to try to pray very slowly of course at first until you you know because you really have to find those notes. but then when you begin to get good at that then you really know your keyboard you know how to maneuver around you know from chord to chord and you can do them in inversions or in root positions. So like inverted, like a C7 inverted, maybe a C9 like that. Be able to move that around like, and know what chord it is. C7, D flat seven, D7, E flat seven. In your, in your mind, you know, so you know what notes fit it. That's a really good exercise is to move chromatically or move through the cycle of this like that's a cycle of this type of move wrapping up I think the herb meister wants to get into the act you know he's one of these black and white guys always in a tuxedo all well well dressed right herbie always well dressed and very dapper <laughs> anyway this is the herb meister and he's signing off for me and saying be cool swing loose and we'll see you next time around bye bye